In this series of videos, we will be working our way through the six major categories of rocks. First, we're going to look at igneous rocks. Okay, so remember back to the rock cycle video? These rocks start off as real hot stuff, okay? Magma is the name of the game, and it is this super hot mineral mush that comes up from below the Earth's crust and stays below the surface. This material generally pools in large magma chambers and cools slowly, which forms rocks with large crystals. This happens in the crust. These rocks are called intrusive igneous rocks. Now, lava is the name of the game when we erupt that same super hot mushy magma melt to the surface of the earth. Okay, so magma is below the surface, lava is above the surface. Lava explodes to the surface. I hope that's pretty easy to remember. Now, any rock that comes from logma, or lava is called extrusive igneous rock. It explodes to the surface. It is extrusive. These rocks cool really fast, geologically speaking. So minerals don't have a ton of time to grow into nice big crystals. So if you see a rock with nice big crystals, it had loads of time to crystallize and came from magma, not lava. Okay, so first let's look at those rocks that form from magma below the surface of the earth. They're called intrusive igneous rocks and they include granite, diorite, and gabbro. Now we start this journey as super hot semi-liquid minerals all partying together at the hottest club in town, the magma chamber. When a magma chamber first forms, it's really hot and it melts its way through the crust and kind of pools under the surface. Minerals in there are semi-liquid and can flow and dance around each other. But after a time, things start to cool down, right? Like any party. Now, this magma came from deep in the earth and now it is in the crust, which is a much cooler place to be. But these minerals are now going to start chilling out. Okay, so especially around the parts of the magma chamber that are um, touching the crust, this is the coolest part to be in, right? And the chillest place. Okay, so any minerals that are there are gonna cool first, right? And what happens is that like every mineral has a different optical and strength property. Each mineral has its own melting temperature. Okay, so the higher the melting temperature, the sooner that that particular mineral is going to cool and crystallize out of that magma mush. Now, as these minerals are crystallizing, they become rigid and solid things that are denser and they kind of stick together. Um, they've got those chemical bonds happening. So they fall out of the magma and they stick to the sides in the bottom of the chamber. And all of this cooling takes a really long time. All right, these minerals get large enough for us to see with our naked eye. And they're generally very pretty. Okay, so uh, we have this sort of uh, crust, not like the crust of the earth, but this sort of crust, like a bread crust, forming in this magma chamber. And it's getting stripes, which is so cool. The ring closest to the outside of the magma chamber has all of those minerals that crystallize first. Let's just call those mafic for now. And the middle ring has minerals that crystallize next, and we're gonna call those intermediate. Then the inside has the minerals that crystallize last, and let's call those felsic. So these three rings have three different chemical makeups and three different mineral components. So we call them different things. Okay, we're gonna call them um, felsic, intermediate, and mafic. Oh, okay, here we go. This should help explain things. These are the three main kinds of rock that form in a magma chamber. Uh, and then add peridotite, which is um, ultramafic. And it forms, it's like the big component of the lower crust, but don't worry about that for this class. We're just going to be looking at the felsic, intermediate, and mafic ones. And there they are. The mafic rock is gonna form first in the magma chamber and we call that gabbro. Now, mafic rocks have those minerals that crystallize first, pyroxene, plagioclase, olivine, amphibole. These minerals tend to be higher in heavy metals like iron and magnesium, and they're also darker in color, and so are the rocks that they form. Okay, next, we look at a rock called diorite. This is the next one to form, it's that intermediate rock. Now we have a lot of diorite in the Cascades here in Washington State, so you might have seen this stuff just laying around. It's formed from intermediate minerals with a sort of middle range of melting temperatures. Okay, these are going to be minerals that you find in uh, mafic rocks and some that you find in felsic rocks. 
Okay, uh, the minerals are mostly dark in color, but now the plagioclase is a lighter colored species of plagioclase. So we get this sort of beautiful Dalmatian rock with little lighter flecks in it. Lastly, the last minerals that crystallize um, give a rock felsic chemistry, and that crystallizes into granite, which I know you've seen before. It's common, but it is also very pretty. And it's made of quartz, orthoclase, which if you remember is that sort of salmony pink color, any leftover plagioclase, amphibole, and biotite with muscovite thrown in for good measure. And those are our intrusive igneous rocks. Now, let's spend a brief moment with extrusive igneous rocks. You may not know much about these rocks yet, except that they form from super hot mineral melt called lava, but don't worry, they won't burn you, they lava you. Now, all extrusive igneous rocks are generated from material that is blasted out of a volcano or erupted from a fissure style eruption, but all of that came from a magma chamber. Now, I said that a magma chamber is cooler than um, where this mineral mush originally comes from. Well, the surface of the earth is way colder compared to even the magma chamber, where a rock can take its time to cool. So when lava pours out of a volcano, it's cooling super fast, so fast that it can't grow crystals big enough to be seen by the average human eye. And that gives rocks a fine grain texture. Magma rocks are intrusive, so they have a longer time to cool, which results in bigger crystals or coarser grains. Lava rocks have the same minerals, but because they're extruded and extrusive, they're erupted to the surface, cool quickly, and that results in those fine, tiny grains. Okay, so now let's add that to our classification chart. So we before just had coarse grained, but now we also have fine grained rocks. Now, if the lava that erupts from a volcano um, hasn't had a lot of time to, uh, to crystallize, right? That magma hasn't really formed gabbro yet. Well, then there's going to be a lot of iron and magnesium with the pyroxenes, plagioclase, amphiboles, and olivines as they erupt. And that is going to make a mafic rock called basalt. Now, if a um, diorite type magma erupts, the resulting rock is called andesite. Now, both diorite and andesite have the same minerals, right? But they look different. Why? Well, remember, it's because of the grain size. It's because of their different cooling histories, right? One cooled slowly under the crust. One cooled quickly at the surface. Same with, um, we look at granite and rhyolite. Exact same minerals, okay? Just one of them has teeny, teeny microscopic crystals that we can't see. The other one has uh, crystals that we can see, okay? And all of that has to do with their cooling time. So if you remember nothing else, please remember, an intrusive is from magma. It cools slowly into big, big crystals. Extrusive is lava. It's fast, small crystals. Mafic contains metals, dark colors. Um, felsic contains a lot of silica, and it is light colors.